This is the only supplement that endurance athletes need to pay attention to. Because if you don't pay attention to it, you're kind of fucked. They say that I'm such a weirdo. Tattoos from my toes to my earlobes. Was a role model. I never had a hero. I learned how to live through the step of your... When I first started running, like with most people, I made lots of progress really quickly. It's like this magic honeymoon period where you just get faster and faster without doing anything. I had a nice steady growth as my easy running pace got faster and faster steadily over time. And everything was great until it wasn't. All of a sudden, I stopped improving completely and I stagnated for about two months or so. And I thought that I was doing everything right, you know, sleep, hydration, fueling my workouts properly, everything was spot on, but I still didn't feel right. So I looked online and I decided that I should probably go get a blood test. So I did that and apparently I had low iron. But what does that mean? So yeah, July 23rd last year, and my iron was pretty bad. I literally do not know how I was running 17 minute 5Ks at this time. It makes no sense. But does having low iron actually matter? Yes, it does. Iron is an element that is used for two specific protein structures that are important for running really, really fast. The first one is hemoglobin. This is what allows red blood cells to grab oxygen and transport it where it's needed, which is basically every cell in the body, including the muscle cells that actually help you to smash along during a fast 5K. The next one, myoglobin. That's an iron containing protein in your muscles. Myoglobin. Myoglobin, makes sense, right? This handshakes with hemoglobin to take the oxygen from the blood to the muscles, the Globin brothers. Son of a bitch. So why did this actually happen? Well, apparently, runner's anemia is a really big issue. In fact, it's such a big issue that scientists actually have studied it. And what they found was the prevalence of anemia in runners is around 15% in males and 47% in females. To so the few females who actually watch this channel, damn dude. That's really rough, I'm sorry. But it also says here that the cause of this is something called foot strike hemolysis. Sounds pretty fancy. The constant pounding on the floor causes red blood cells in the smallest capillaries of your feet to explode. Yikes. Plus, the constant sweating during many, many hours a week of exercise also is a way that iron leaves the body. So as you can tell, I didn't die, in fact, after this period, and once I fixed this issue, I ran faster than ever, and I felt really good. So how do you know if this is an issue that you're having and you need to address it? Well, it all starts with step two, and that's because step one is really boring, and I actually did that yesterday. Hey, how you going? I uh, haven't had a blood test in probably six months, so I'd like to get a checkup, if that's okay. They call me a monster. I guess I don't fit in with the imposters. I'm taking the mask off. Prepare your conscience. Prepare for honest. Cut off all the nonsense. I'm all of your shot. You wonder who shot you. Speaking of blood tests, I got a question on my last video from Jao Nunez who asked, what's going on with blood tests? What do you actually need? Good question and you're a smart guy. Hormones, we wanna check our testosterone to make sure that we're not tanking our hormones. If we do that, it means that we're probably overtraining and we're not gonna actually feel all that good. Now the next two things that I would get on the blood test would be a creatine kinase and cortisol because that helps us to understand if we're overtraining, if we're getting too inflamed and if overall our body is really stressed. And lastly, for blood, we want to check our red blood cell count, our hemoglobin, our hematocrit, and our white blood cell count to make sure that our immune system is pretty hot. I'm going to go do my blood test. Time to understand these blood values that relate to iron, because they're so important. The first one, obviously, is serum iron, which is the amount of iron that's in your blood, and that is what's in the hemoglobin protein complex that's in the red blood cell. Now, ferritin is the amount of stored iron in your body that's usually stored in cells, kind of like a bank vault. And so what you can actually see happen is that if you have a high um, aerobic demand in your training, you can actually see that your iron levels maintain themselves and your ferritin actually drops as your body tries to adapt to these new training stimulus. Now the next thing that we need to talk about is B12 because it's literally the least talked about thing in blood tests and it's so important. I honestly have no idea how I run a sub 18 minute 5k with a hemoglobin level of 140. It just doesn't seem possible, but I did. But 
I felt absolutely terrible. And interestingly, low iron as well as high iron actually feel the exact same. Okay, so you've gone to your doctor and you've confirmed with him via a blood test to confirm that iron is actually your main issue. Now what? Now the average person is usually getting eight to 18 micrograms of iron per day. So usually by adding in a variety of different iron rich foods, this can actually help to increase those iron levels without having to take supplements initially. So let's start with that. Oh, really quick, I don't eat meat and you probably do and that's perfectly fine, but hear me out. The chances are that you've always been eating meat and it hasn't really helped in increasing your iron levels. So you either need to eat a bigger variety from different sources to get that same absorption or you just need to stop running. Spinach. Here's the thing, Popeye probably had a hemoglobin of 180 and could probably run a 5K for around 15 minutes because he was getting so much iron in from his spinach. The next thing that I would add in would be legumes, also known as beans for us normal people. You could add this stuff to your spaghetti bolognese and not even know it and get all of that iron. Easy 5K park run PB meal for sure. And my absolute favorite source of iron in the world, dates. There's one microgram of iron per 100 grams of dates. Also, one I forgot to buy at the shops and mention, sweet potatoes. They're also pretty good and they're yummy when they're roasted and a fair amount of iron. All right, now what about supplements? Now, with advice from your doctor, you should only be taking these iron supplements. If you don't have evidence that you need to take iron supplements, via a blood test and also consultation with your doctor. Don't even touch these because you will end up in serious trouble. But anyways, all that aside, there are a couple of different supplements that you can take to get your iron levels up. The most popular ones are the ferros and the sulfate. These are really good, but they'll actually give you GI distress. So I would test them both out to see which one's actually better. For example, I can't take these ferro tabs because they make my gut hurt really bad. I can take these ferro sulfate tabs because they don't hurt my gut that much. Now there are three other things that you can do to actually increase your absorption of iron. The first one is super dosing it with vitamin C. The second is taking it 30 minutes before exercise in the morning. That has been found to have the highest absorption. And for some reason it doesn't really work 30 minutes before workout later in the day. It only works in the morning. And the last thing that you can do is avoid taking caffeine because that will blunt the absorption of iron for a long period of time in your gut. So don't take caffeine around this iron supplementation protocol. Okay, for the last time, repeat after me. Consult your doctor. Good. Get a blood test. Good. Train hard. Eat carbs. Good. Peace. Well done, guys.